Hey there, it's your MC operator here. Um, today's video is actually inspired by one of my students. Um, we were talking um, and he just made a, a recent purchase. So brought it out and we were looking at it and um, it wasn't long after that I noticed that he really just didn't uh, really know his firearm. He wasn't really comfortable handling it. Um, there is definitely an intimidation factor going on. So as I sort of dove deeper, uh, I realized he wasn't even aware of the manual of arms. Um, so he loved his firearm, <laughs> but um, it had become this entity in the drawer because he didn't really understand it. So I've got the two things I want to accomplish in this video. Um, we're we're going to talk about manual of arms first. Um, and then we're also going to talk about um, how to avoid that scary entity thing in the drawer. Um, and the only way to do that is to really handle your firearms. Um, that's the only way to get around that sort of uh, intimidation factor. But first thing we're going to do, we're going to sh uh, show that the firearms that we're working with are uh, safe to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and show clear. Uh, we have an empty chamber, empty well, and we have an empty magazine, safe to work with. Uh, empty cylinder, and close that action. Empty chamber, empty magazine. And just so we also clear too, when you're at home, make sure you run the action a few times just to make sure that if anything is in there, it definitely will release. Um, but these have been pre-checked. So we have an empty chamber, empty well, nothing in the magazine. There we go. Um, so, basically we're going to talk about manual of arms. Um, when you are looking to purchase your first firearm or, or a firearm, one thing to consider is right now with the uh, mad purchasing of firearms, it's very possible that your selection is going to be limited when you go to the gun store. So even if you are intelligent enough to do some research beforehand, there's a good chance the firearm that you've done the research on, <laughs> well, A, might not be on the California roster, depending on how intelligent your search is. Um, but uh, B, um, with the fact that the stores are just so empty, you know, you may have actually made a good decision and a California legal decision and not be able to find the firearm anywhere. Um, so then you get to the store and you know, the guy behind the counter sort of leads you towards another firearm. Uh, and then all of a sudden you have a firearm that you have no clue of how it really operates. So we're going to talk about some things to think about when you're are, uh, investigating uh, the manual of arms. Um, we have four different manual of arms represented here today. Um, also too, I'd like to, at this point, thank, um, a really good friend of the channel. Um, we have a buddy of mine who basically I would put his inventory uh, and his arsenal up against anybody's in California. Um, but actually kind of anybody anywhere. It, he, his, um, his safes are pretty impressive <laughs> with the, the items in there. And he's become a good friend of the channel and lets me uh, pick and choose some to uh, basically... Um, review on my channel. Uh, but I have a couple of his here and a couple of mine which represent different manual of arms. So we're going to go down the line a little bit. Um, we have uh, a 1911. And a 1911 is a single actual, a single action firearm. Um, and this one here is something that I would not necessarily uh, suggest someone out the blocks purchase. Um, it does have an external safety, and this one happens to have safeties on both sides, so it's ambidextrous. But if you're not planning on doing a lot of training 
you very well could wind up um, in a situation where you need to put a round down range and really forget to take off the safety. Um, it takes a lot of training to make sure that that is part of the draw and a part of the uh, sight picture. But again, not my first choice for someone who A, is not going to practice a lot, and B, it's their first time firearm because there's a lot to a 1911. Um, but once you are ready for one, they're also, I feel like everybody's arsenal should have one, but just not their first one. Um, and that brings me to my Beretta. And the Beretta is um, actually a single double action. Now this one does have an external safety as well, um, but Spoiler alert, it won't have a external safety for long. That, that'll that be explained later on down the road. But the benefit of a single double action is you can actually have this uh, firearm in double action uh, and not with a safety on, and you're in a great position to A, be safe, uh, and then B, but also be able to uh, send around on range if necessary. Um, one of the caveats to that is, um, it, it wouldn't necessarily be, again, the first choice I'd tell somebody if they weren't planning on getting some training and doing some practicing because you do have two trigger pulls to be concerned about with a single double action. And not that it's all that difficult to master those two different uh, trigger pulls, but again, it calls for some time, some training. Um, and so might not be the first thing I would suggest somebody um, if they are not going to get some training, if they are committed to train and get uh, put the time in, this is a fabulous uh, format. Um, but it really depends on how much time you're going to put in, in put in on your firearm. The third, um, and it's going to be represented by, and again, this is uh, a loaner to the channel. This is a six-hour P320 midsize. Love this firearm. Wish it was mine. It isn't, but ah, she feels so good in the hand. Such a great, uh, just a great series from Six Hour. But this one is going to represent the uh, uh, Striker Fire, so which would also encompass the Glocks um, and obviously quite a few other firearms XDs. Um, and the nice thing about this is the trigger pulls are consistent. Um, they don't have external safeties. Uh, maybe some do, but for the most part, you're going to come across most of them without an external safety, but they do have other safeties built in. Um, so, uh, there are other ways that you are protected per se. But with that being said, you only have one trigger pull, uh, to be concerned about. So... Um, you can definitely get away with a little less training. Not that I'm encouraging less training, but um, you don't have two different trigger pulls to uh, have to learn to manipulate. And you also do not have to uh, worry about um, taking out the safety when you need to put a round down range. So a nice format to begin. Um, and that's why Glocks are so popular and those kind of things. You know, it's a, a good firearm platform uh, for a first time purchaser. The last, and again, a loaner from uh, our friend of the channel, um, is the revolver. And now, I don't necessarily, um, I don't really suggest revolvers very often, um, but you know, they are still a viable option and um, they do have some limitations we're talking about round count and those kind of things but um and they do have different manual of arms in the revolver uh, category as well you could have some single action revolvers you could have single double action you could have just double action revolvers so there are some that you need to be concerned about and think about when you're purchasing a revolver as well um and again you're going to be coming up with a limited round count which we're in california you know so even our Glocks and such, you know, are limited to 10 rounds. So it's not like you are going to be extremely limited, but, you know, the reloading factor is a lot different. Um, even the grip is different because, um, well, let me switch. So we'll go to the um, striker fire. 
So now with the modern grip, you know, obviously we are high on the back of the firearm. Um, and then we take up this real estate with our uh, offhand thumb forward and then the other thumb forward as well. And then of course we wrap under here. So the thumbs forward is now the modern grip for most firearms. But with a revolver, that same grip is going to impede the action of the firearm. So, which is an absolute no-no because -no, you can either get hurt or you can cause the firearm to malfunction. So you have to re resort back to the old thumb over thumb uh, grip, um, which, so it's something, it's just a training issue, um, but obviously, you know, training is necessary with any new purchase. So, but it definitely changes the game a little bit. And so when you're switching f uh, formats, you need to be aware of the fact that you're going back to the thumb over thumb um, to not impede the um, action of the firearm. Um, and again, so when we get back to the 1911, the 1911, again, would not be my first suggestion for a new owner. But again, the fact that I believe every uh, firearm owner should someday own the 1911. When they talk about triggers, um, the 1911 is what all trigger, triggers are measured after. So when you see this here, and then we put this down here, it's just nice, short amount of travel, and it, it's just that simple. And the reset, again is short so follow-up shots are a dream shooting the firearm quickly is a dream um it's just the fact that you know when you deal with that manual safety training is necessary and also to the maintenance of a 1911 is a lot more in depth than most firearms um so you know, again, somebody at route the blocks might be easier w when it comes to, say, cleaning a, a, you know, a striker fire or even a single double action. Like this firearm here is, well, the revolver would probably be the absolute easiest to clean. But this one here is simple as well. I mean, the takedown is like 2.5 seconds, if, if that. So we would drop the magazine you lock it back there's a little button on the side here you would just push and it will take down a lever and then it's free so maintaining a firearm like this is a walk in the park um, I'm not going to take off the uh, 1911 <laughs> right now because believe me it's a, a lot more in-depth than um anything else so not, not gonna do it but um the other firearms are super easy to maintain so um but let's talk about um the second part of my conversation which led me to this video when you make a purchase and you don't handle your firearm and don't come familiar with your firearm um, all of a sudden it just sort of becomes a scary entity in the drawer and you're gonna feel like well if somebody comes in the house I'll be ready to protect myself I'll just grab it and it, it'll, I'll, I'll rise to the occasion well you're not going to do that you're really gonna lower it to your lowest form of training so if that thing is scares you when it's a perfect world you're gonna be afraid to grab it when your world is upside down um, so what I suggest is at first having a, a practice uh, magazine. So you'd have all other ammunition in a different room. Um, and then just manipulate it, play with it, watch TV, you know, but work the action, pull the trigger, get used to the double action, which is, we'll show you a little longer trigger pull, a little trigger press. And with the double action, one of the main things you think about is not trying to stage it and not trying to snap it, but just roll through the double action. And as you're kind of rolling through, what you're trying to do is you're kind of rolling your trigger right through the back of the rear sights. So just nice 
and consistent and right through the rear sight. Um, don't try to stage it or find a wall. Don't try to <laughs> snap it. To, you know, there's my sight. <clears throat> Just nice press, nice little roll through. And then your single action will be um, just like any other striker fire action activity, find the wall, press through, and you're good to go. Um, but the real key is, again, spend time with your firearm, manipulate it, get some snap caps, you know, which are um, basically practice bullets. Um, you can work, you know, loading it, unloading it. Um, cause I, I've seen people who think they know what they're doing, you know, and go to hand someone a firearm and still have around the chamber because they don't know how to clear it correctly. Um, I've seen, you know, people go through a whole magazine trying to get the, you know, magazine out of the firearm, but instead they keep putting one into the round in the tray burn. So they're just like, all of a sudden all you got cartridges flying all over the place. Um, all that comes from sort of anxiety from not spending time with your firearm. Again, hold it, play with it, you know, work the action, you know, work, work your grip. Just make sure that a, you have a safe downrange area so that you know that you're not putting anything in jeopardy. Um, make sure that live rounds are, in a totally separate area, another room. Um, but then it's just a tool, you know? I mean, so learn your craft, learn how to manipulate your tool, and take the big scary thoughts out of it. It's just a firearm. It's just a tool, like a hammer or anything else. Um, and so once you learn how to use it, it's yours to do what you need to do whether it be range therapy for just joy and having a good time or protecting yourself if need be, um, whatever the, the situation calls for or wherever you purchase it for. You know, some people buy a, f a firearm for different reasons or it may have multiple reasons um, just to make sure that whatever you're buying it for, you do the research to buy the proper tool for the application you're going to be using it for. If you're planning on carrying it, you know, something like this out the blocks, probably not the best call. I mean, it's over three pounds once you have it loaded and with, you know, all the accessories and accoutrements. Um, not a good all day carry option. Bedside gun, awesome. All day in the waistband, probably not. Um, but anyway, like I said, just know what you were getting it for. Um, have a good plan. And, you know, YouTube has so many different firearm videos out there. Do your research, you know, find out from um, California's website what's on the roster and then work back from there, you know, or find a firearm you like, then check and see if it's on the roster. Um, I suggest you talk to a, a consultant like myself, an instructor like myself. I can give you five to, you know, ten firearms that you can go look at that fits your window. And then you can kind of go, I like this one, let me go try it. We go make sure it's a fit your hand, all those kind of fun things. Um, but do your recon in whatever, you know, fashion that you feel most comfortable. And then, I mean, and then make um, smart choices because firearms aren't cheap. And with everybody buying so many, um, <laughs> it's just driving the prices even higher. So you definitely want to make sure you are buying what you want um, and making sure you make smart choices. Anyway, uh, that's about it for today. Um, so again, thank you for stopping by my channel. Um, obviously, please, if you can, if you find some value, give me a like, um, subscribe. All those things help the you know, rhythms and you know of my channel. So um, other than that, have an amazing day. Take care now.